Scanners is a movie that has probably the most iconic scene in all of B-movie canon. Scanners is one of those movies I'd been aware of for probably decades at this point and had never gotten around to watching, with the head explosion scene being something I'd seen at least 50 times in various places over those years. It feels like a fairly climactic thing to happen. So imagine my surprise when that scene is in the first 10 minutes of the film. Those opening minutes are about as strong an opening to a movie I've seen in ages. You are introduced to our protagonist, the antagonist, and their powers in a fairly spectacular fashion. With Stephen Lack as our protagonist, Cameron Vale, being chased and apprehended in a mall by some form of shadowy science group called Consec, who are our secondary antagonists who then proceed to perform some experiments upon him. This scene also introduces us to the discordant audio and visuals which are designed to produce a feeling of unease within the viewer, being all quick, seemingly unconnected cuts and high-pitched whines that mirror the discomfort Bailey is being placed under and transfers that onto you, the audience. That's something you will quickly notice about this film. It has wonderful cinematography, editing, and a soundtrack that although you wouldn't sit and listen to it in your spare time, perfectly complements the on-screen visuals. Then we are introduced to Michael Ironside's Daryl Revok, who has to have one of the most brilliant introductions in all of film, as he explodes the head of a concept scanner and proceeds to escape by murdering five or six other people in a sequence that is nothing short of brilliant. As for that truly iconic head explosion, the effect was achieved by making a plaster skull with a gelatin exterior that was then stuffed with scraps of wax, latex scraps, bits and bobs, loads of stringy stuff and leftover hamburgers, which were then exploded by the special effects supervisor Gary Zeller by shooting them from behind with a shotgun. I personally don't think there has ever been a better head explosion in a movie, and one of the reasons I created my own is because you just know if the often announced but never materialized remake does happen, that's what it will look like. Which is to say, about a million times worse. The special effects in this film are actually glorious, some brilliant practical effects, explosions, and my own personal favorite that I wish to god would make a comeback, actual real not CGI blood squibs. Now, at this point in proceedings, I thought I was in for a 10 out of 10 film. But sadly, by the last scene, the rest of the 103 minute runtime never quite lives up to those opening 10, meaning I got a 7 out of 10 flick instead for the following reasons. The story is a really simple one, but also at the same time, entirely convoluted. There are 237 people who have special telekinetic abilities, a shady corporation is trying to turn these individuals into superhuman weapons, but so far has had very little to no success, as the telekinetic powers tend to turn the people into a mental husk of a human being. There is also a very powerful scanner, who runs an underground team of scanners, whose plans are revealed way too late in the piece to ever really matter, if I'm being really honest, but more on that later. In fact, this is one of my biggest complaints about the film. Michael Ironside's Revok is criminally underused. He has a brilliant introduction, then spends the next hour and change, only appearing two or three times sitting on a park bench, having a conversation with a turncoat from Consec, or in archival interview footage. We spend most of the runtime with our protagonist Vale, who isn't very interesting as a character. In fact, he's positively dull as one, not helped by the lifeless performance by Stephen Lack, as he battles Consec, who are also a bit generic and dull as far as antagonists go, as a shadowy evil corporation, hell-bent on exploiting human suffering for profit. Michael Ironside is an actor who can chew scenery as if his life depends on it, and even he, in the two or three scenes he gets to appear, is incredibly understated. And to be fair here to the actors, Acting like you are using telekinetic powers can be tricky because you have to look like you are both concentrating and forcing something out of your body. 
Yeah, it looks a lot like you are taking a massive constipation shit. All this means even though you get a few decent action scenes in that middle period of the film, the scenes are happening to characters you just met and don't really care about, so it's all about the special effects, which as I previously said, are at least glorious. It feels like Cronenberg had an exceptional premise that just isn't properly fleshed out and utilised, which when you discover even he says this was his most difficult film to produce, makes sense. With the film being rushed into production to take advantage of a Canadian tax loophole, for investors that meant the film entered production without sets or even a finished script, with Cronenberg writing scenes the morning they were meant to be shot. All that being said though, this does feel very Cronenbergian, with themes running throughout that are present in most of his work. Those being a science experiment gone wrong that creates innate powers within a person or people that also may or may not cause insanity and definitely causes some form of body horror that the people within the film then have to control or be consumed by. There's also a scientist that on the surface seems like they're doing what they're doing for the betterment of mankind or out of kindness to the people affected, but is in reality the cause of all the chaos. You can see all of these themes in this film with the scanners having extraordinary powers of telekinesis that drive the possessor insane with voices in their heads. It is revealed by the film's end that these powers were caused by Dr. Paul Ruff, a scientist at Consec who throughout most of the film seems like he's a kindly gent and a break on the nefarious schemes of the shady corpo overlords, but actually, as it turns out, was a mad scientist who created the scanners by experimenting not only on the general public, but even his own children, which is something we will get to in a minute. The body horror element that Cronenberg is probably most famous for and in fact, this film is credited for bringing his genius for that to an international market, is there, but isn't as front and centre as it might possibly have been or is in his other work. We get the head explosion in the first 10 minutes, but after that we don't get much in the way of body horror until the very last scene, which is once again, glorious. In the end, it turns out Vale and Revok are brothers, and not just brothers, but the children are Dum dum dum! Paul Roof! With Revok's evil plan now being revealed in the final scene of the movie, with him attempting to create more scanners by distributing the drug that created the original batch of scanners to pregnant women, with him then planning to recruit these individuals once they grow up into an army of superhumans that he will use to control the world. Of course, Vale refuses to go along with this, and they have the greatest staring contest ever, where Vale seemingly loses, eventually bursting into flames and melting in a wonderful scene of body horror, or does he, because of the very last second, he seems to have transferred his consciousness into Revot's mind, Something that is set up earlier in the film as a possibility, but personally kind of feels like a cop-out ending. Which is why I said earlier this film's narrative has a straightforward premise. It's good versus evil, but is in fact fairly convoluted because a lot of it, much like the powers the scanners do or do not possess from scene to scene, seems to have been written to get Cronenberg out of the corner he'd written himself into earlier rather than it making logical sense within the framework of the universe he's created. It's very much a script that needed two or three more passes to refine it and turn it into the 10 out of 10. It's potential definitely possessed. With all that being said, I still of course recommend this film to you as it is well worth a watch. The special effects are brilliant. There are one or two excellent body horror scenes and the story although probably the weakest element of this flick beyond the acting, has at its core a very intriguing premise, and is strong enough that I was always entertained. But as I said previously, probably needed another few script revisions to realise that 10 out of 10 potential. If you liked that, then like, comment and subscribe for more, because even though it really does feel like I'm screaming into the void at times, I do enjoy making these videos and have some great retrospectives coming up.